Hello guys, welcome back to our next topic. In this topic, we'll be learning about the understanding tree using the SOPs that we have learned and also the danger zone. Not only that, I'm going to show you about how do we use the NORA entry in the chart. So we're going to start from the biggest time frame, top down analysis, all the way to the NORA entry. So let's get started. So before we even start to go to the chart, first, I would like you guys to note down all this. This is the floor, okay? So we want to follow the steps so that we have not make any mistake while we do our analysis. Treat this as our checklist before our entry. So it is very important that we have a systematic chart analysis and we will entry after we have done the systematic chart analysis. You guys jot it down? Very good. If you're ready, then we can go to the trading view chart. So let's go. All right, guys. So here we can see this is a Euro AUD chart. So let's have a look at this pair. If you look at the weekly time frame, yes, this is a weekly time frame. In the weekly time frame, we can see that this is a second movement in this area, isn't it? So it doesn't mean that when there is a second movement, we shall ignore. No, we shall treat it as a monitoring zone as well because this second movement is just to validate that this will be a strong resistance so let's go to the daily time frame is much better on the second movement so in this case i'm gonna mark this okay so let's do a little bit of back test here so we mark our danger zone on the daily time frame so in this daily time frame as we can see we go to the daily time frame, then we go to the line chart. We mark this as our resistance. As you can see here, this is our second movement. So I'm going to mark this as a second movement so that we know that this is a strong resistance on the daily time frame. Okay. So let's mark this as a second movement. So we have the second movement on the daily time frame. Now what you do is go back to the candlestick chart on the step 3 of the marking danger zone. Sorry, it would be the step 4 of marking the danger zone. So the step 4 will be marked from the edge of the resistance all the way up to the shadow. So we have done here. So that we mark the zone. So from the edge of the resistance all the way up to the shadow. So once we are done here, we have the second movement. Okay, then we have we have validated that this is a strong resistance. Next, what should we do? We wait for confirmation of rejection. So we wait for confirmation of rejection. So normally if this is a daily time frame, we will wait the confirmation of rejection at the which time frame guys? Yes, the H4 time frame or the H1 time frame. So let's go to the H4 time frame first. As you can see here, I'm going to show you one thing here. We have one confirmation of rejection. I'm going to mark this properly. Confirmation of rejection on this candlestick. This is what you call, guys, the bearish engulfing. Now, is this a confirmation of rejection? Yes, I would consider this is a very good bearish engulfing and the body of the engulf close below the danger zone of the daily time frame therefore this is considered as a confirmation of rejection on the h4 time frame for the daily danger zone so i'm going to write this as daily danger zone right daily danger zone dz resistance okay so on the h4 we have the confirmation of rejection what should we do next now is to go on the time frame H1 and below to look for entry setup. So let's say I'm going to remove this, this here. I'm going to remove this candlestick. Okay, we don't have any uh, setup yet. Okay, so what we know is that the H4 has confirmed, reject from the zone. Next, we look for the F5 setup at the H1 time frame and below. 
Why is it at the H1 time frame below, guys? Because the confirmation of rejection is at the H4 time frame. So when we have the H4 as our confirmation of rejection, then we move to the smaller time frame to look for F5 setup. So let's go to the H1. Can you guys see anything? Cool. I see there are two setups here. The possibility of two setups. Oh, this is very beautiful, guys. First, we're going to mark this as our QMR. So I'm going to mark this line as our QMR. We have the high, low, higher high, and the lower low. Okay. Another possibility, guys. There's another one here. This is what set up, guys. It is the SNRC1. This is also a very beautiful SNRC1. So what should we do if we found the SNRC1? We mark the base, the drop, base drop as our entry point. Okay, so we mark the base first. I'm going to change the color to, let's say, purple. Yes, okay, we have a clearer view. So once we mark this as our drop base drop as our entry point, next, what should we do for the SNRC1 setup is to go to the line chart. Why? Because we have to make sure this support has to be a capital letter V. At the same time, it has to be inside this entry point area. So, let's change to the line chart. Yes, we can see that first, the QM is very sharp. We have the high, low, higher high, lower, low. Secondly, we have the SNRC1. Very good. This capital letter V is inside the entry point of the drop base drop. I'm going to make mark it sharply. Okay. So, we have two setups. Okay, now, we do not know which will the price going to react. Normally, price will come to the QM because why? QM is a reversal where the SNRC1 is the continuation. So, what should we do, guys? If I were you, I would just put two POs on this to set up. Why? The difference of these two PO is about only 10 pips, 10.4 pips. Okay, so the difference is not much. So, if you are a risk taker, you would willing to take a raise here. You can set your PO. First PO for the SNRC one is the 1.63826. The other one is the 1.63930. Okay. So once we have our uh, set up here. Next, what should we do? Oh, we need to mark the QM. So I'm going to mark this QM zone as well as a monitoring zone later when price coming back here. So we need to go to the higher time frame to check whether our setup is in the confirmation of the NGAF. Yes, we need to have the confirmation at the higher time frame. So we go change to the higher time frame. Oh, guys. Okay, so here there are two scenarios now. The QM, in this case, the QM, the setup is not in the body of the NGAF. It is at the week of the NGAF. So this, I'm going to mark it as high risk. QMR H1 is as high risk okay so why high risk because price is at the week of the confirmation candle at the week is at the week of the confirmation candle okay so I'm we're going to mark this as high risk secondly the SNRC one it's good, okay? So, SNRC1 setup is in the confirmation candle. So, this is low risk. SNRC1 is at the candle of the confirmation. H1 QMR is at the week of the candle. So, in this case, when I found that this is at the high risk of the confirmation, what I should do is I will cancel this PO. So I'm going to mark this uh, an X. Okay, I'm going to mark it an X at the red color. We do not want to entry at for the high risk setup. Okay, so we're going to mark an X. Uh, X, there we go. Okay, uh, let me put it here much better. X. Uh, uh. Ok, 
Okay, so we do not want to enter the QMR H1. We will only enter the SNRC1 setup. So let's get back to the H1 time frame. If we go to the H1 time frame, if this is your entry point. Normally, your SL would be above the zone. Okay, so let's say here is your SL. Now, we do not want to put the SL exactly in this zone. Why? Because of spread. So in this case, you can add another 5 pips. So if add another 5 pips, now this QMR will be our SL. So there are two ways you can do. Either you want to set an SL for this setup, or you want to monitor the price. So when price, if the price close a candle above this zone, then maybe you want to consider to cut loss. So I'm going to mark this QMR line as our SL. So I'm going to mark as red color with a big, okay, thick line. So we know that this is our SL. So next thing, so we go to the M30 chart. Oh, M30 is same as well, SNRC1, or this is considerably as a as SNRC2, okay? Because why? Price go down, really, really, base, drop, okay? So M30, we will stick here. Let's look at the next candle, what was going on. Has the price come back here? Not yet, right? Nope, not yet. Okay, good. Okay. The reason why we do this because we want to find the previous low. Okay, so let's say we're going to mark this as our TP area here. So I'm going to color this as green. Okay, so I'm going to color this as green. This will be our potential TP area. Okay, guys. So let's take this one. Our position, we have to calculate our risk and reward. So this is a short position. Short position means it is a sell position. Click this area. Our entry point. There we go. Next, we shall adjust our risk and reward. Okay. So let's say we're going to risk um, around 20 pips. 20 pips will be around here. Okay. So I'm going to set this as a line. Instead of here, I'm going to move here. 20 pips. I think 20 pips for SL is considerably justified. Okay. And our tech profit will be around 39, 38 pips. Okay. 38.8 pips. Yes. So our risk reward will be 1.89. Okay. The risk reward ratio, as you can see, let me zoom up. Risk reward ratio, you can see, is 1.89. So our entry will be this area, the green color one. Okay, guys. It will be 1.63826. And then our SL will be 1.64036. And our tech profit will be 1.6343. 8 or 31. Okay. 31 is the line. 8 is the this thing that we put here. Okay. So now our risk reward is good. Okay, because why? The reward is higher than the risk. So this is the first uh, TP that you can put. Next, if we go to the daily time frame. Okay, the daily time frame. The next area that you want to put for, t for your TP. If we go to this, let's look from here to here. Okay, this is a previous resistant area. Right, guys? So we're going to mark this as a resistant area. I'm going to... Mark this as um, for blue color. Yes, we're going to color it dark blue. I'm not going to make it so thick. going to just put two or maybe one is good enough thickness. Okay. So this will be our next tech profit area. Why? Because of the broken resistance hasn't been tested yet. Okay. On the daily time frame. So this is a previous resistance break, candle break. Okay. Then price will come and retest this as a new support. So we'll, we're going to make, make it higher. So let's say 1.616 for add. I'm going to make it higher here. Maybe put here. Okay, slightly higher because of spread. So I'm going to exit at 1.619. 1 okay, guys. So let's go to the H4 back. Go back to the H1. Okay, so we have... This one, 
we put another short position this time we're gonna put it here this one as our okay so our sl our next tp i'm gonna put yep 1.61 6191 is doesn't matter only one pips apart okay so our risk and reward ratio for this case it will be 8.85 this is considerably very high for a risk reward however if you're able to hold not sure how many days this is gonna come here but if you're a swinger yes you may think that this is a good idea or once you have put two position of entry one is to tp here another is to tp here so you have two tp once one tp here the second one maybe you want to set the break even and then let the con price continues to reach the TP if there is any possibility. So next thing, once we have set our risk reward, we have set our take profit, we have set our risk. Next, what should we do? Roadblock. Identify our roadblock. Since that is a daily setup, okay? Sorry, that's a daily uh, danger zone. We go to the hedge four to check for any roadblock. So first roadblock, I can see here, this is the roadblock, okay? What is this? This is the demand zone. Okay, so roadblock for seller. Demand zone is this is a rally best rally. So we're gonna color this as. Let's go for red as a roadblock. There's another roadblock here again. Okay, here, here. Okay, so we have two roadblock for in the hedge four. Let's go to the hedge one. So clearly hedge one has been marked. Mm, I don't see anything here roadblock. So let's go to the M thirty. Nothing as nothing much. Okay, probably here, probably here. Okay, so there is one base here, little small base. So I'm gonna mark this whole thing. Okay, so easy for mon for me to monitor. Okay, guys. So once we have set all our roadblocks, what should we do next? Okay, so we have everything checklist got, guys. So we have our confirmation of rejection on the hedge four time frame, which is the bearish engulfing. Then we have the setup as NRC1 as our lorry setup. So I do not choose as the QMR. Okay, guys? So we skip that one. Next thing is what? The confirmation of this setup is all in the hedge four at the body for the SNRC1. Next, we set our SL, okay, 20 pips from our entry point. Or if you do not set SL, then you can monitor the price when the price comes back into this zone. If the price close above this zone in one candlestick, okay, then you may consider to cut loss your trade okay guys if there is one can if it's a slow slow small small one then you might you can monitor further okay guys so once i have all of this now there are two ways one if you're a risk taker you can take this it's only 20 pips however if it is me i will set this as my entry point my first tp and i will only risk 20 pips next one nora entry when does it comes in so first of all for the price to come in to get our Nora entry, what should we do, guys? As you can see here, in the M5 time frame, in the M5 time frame, what do you see here, guys? Do you see anything? Okay, let me change it to the M1. I know you guys are going to think that this is very ridiculous, but this is going to be very fun. As you can see here, this here is the QM. High, low, higher, high, lower, low. As remember, guys, in the... Nora entry that we learned, it is the setup, okay? Inside the setup, there is QM. So this is the QM in the M1 for Nora entry, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the M5 later on to come in to have a confirmation of rejection before I entry in the, using the Nora entry method. So let's have a look. Speed this up a bit. Hopefully you can see the result quite soon. Okay, oh, this is very fast. As you can see, as you can see here, guys, see, this is the entry that we set on this uh, high risk reward, okay, entry. So if in the M5, we couldn't see anything. However, in the M1, let's move to the M1. What can we see? Okay, guys, I see something again in the M1. All right, let me, how to, oh, this is the thing that move. All right, okay, I'm not gonna disturb this. There we go. Okay, very nice. So I'm going to cut this off again. Okay, guys, in the M1 time frame, price has touched this area, right? So if 
if you have entry year six one point six three eight three, then you have probably float one or I don't think you even float, guys. This is a very sharp entry. So once you can, price comes here, it's straight away take our SNRC order and goes down. So if you are worried, right, because you worry of let retest, and then you're not sure whether price is gonna react, how is it gonna react? Okay, we go to the so we go to the H1, we can see the price react, and then we go back to the M5. Okay, price react. So in the M1, NORA entry, how does this work? Like I say, guys, this is our QM. Okay, we have the low, sorry, we have the high, low, higher high. Let me repeat, high, low, higher, high, lower, low. Why I do not take here? Because price will always come to the current QM. Means the closest Q, uh, left shoulder. So I'm going to mark this color as... Mm, what color shall we put? We put it as... We have green, purple. No, we have purple. Yellow. Okay, good. So yellow is more clearer here. So I'm going to mark this as our QM. So what is the risk of here? Now, we can measure the risk. Okay, guys, so I'm going to put this as our entry point here. Next. Okay, so the risk up to this higher high. Okay, guys, higher high here. See, this is the higher high. So normally what we should do with QM is that we put five tips above the higher high or the lower low. So the higher high or the lower low is the head of the QM. So this is about 10 pips. I'm going to put 15 pips. Okay, guys, five pips above. Why? So let's look at the M5. M5 has already closed two candles down. So this is confirmation that the price has broke the structure. You see, guys, it doesn't. It doesn't even respect the SNRC one at the M5 setup. Okay. So we know that the seller has come in very strong. It broke the structure. What structure did it broke? Like I said, guys, this M high low higher high lower low. Okay. So price most probably will come back here and then goes down. So we look at the M5 is in the body of the Engulf candle. So this is very good. Okay. So we have to, one oh it's shooting star, isn't it, guys? Or what do you, what do you want to call it? You want to call it inverted hammer? Inverted hammer goes out with the M15, another bearish engulfing candle. But anyway, let's go back to the M1 time frame. We only risk 15 pips, okay, for Nora entry. However, our reward will be 40 pips for the first TP, okay? So if you entry at the Nora entry, normally our TP will be here, isn't it? At the lower low but since this is a higher time frame we entry at the m1 time frame then we should go back to the h1 which is the lower low the lower low the potential tp first will be here okay here is fine guys then we can do here so i'm gonna mix in not 40 pips so i'm gonna put it here it will be risk reward of how many let's say okay no not that oh here digger okay guys so here see here okay it's about 20 pips So you risk 15 pips and then you risk you risk 15 pips okay but then you can get around 20 pips of your reward for your first tp okay guys so this is for scalper so your next tp could be this area the previous floor again and then the and then the all the way down you can put the tp down here like we, here, like we said okay on the daily sorry on the h4 time frame if we look into it so let's go back to the m1 time frame come back to our setup so let's see price react Yes, it got our orders. And then, okay, guys. So, it get our order here. See, it get our order. Doesn't matter. It's here, from here to here. It floats around three pips. Oh, my goodness. It floats around three pips. So, this is the good thing about the Nora entry. Our risk has become smaller. Okay? Not only that, it floats for a while and then it quickly get away from this zone. So if you want to hit our SL, it will hit much faster. We don't have to wait so long. But if you want to take profit, also could be faster as well. So now, let's go to the H1 time frame and then let's see what will happen to the price. See, price, it doesn't respect. The price doesn't respect this roadblock. Okay? Why? Because price comes from the daily danger zone. Okay? H1 roadblock. H4 roadblock. It react a little bit. Nothing much. You see, just react within the zone and then continue. Alright, guys? You can see here like this one. This is the base. Price broke. Retest this, you can entry again if you know if you are familiar with SND, with what we call the base break, base break, pull back, re entry. Okay, and so on. So, guys, it even hit the TP here. Well, this is 192 pips, guys. 192 pips. So, you're risking the initial risking was only 20 pips. If you're using the Nora entry, it's 15 pips. Okay, 
So here you have TP about 20 pips or the max previous low is 40 pips. And then here on the H4, potential reward is 192 pips, guys. Okay, so this is the key. All right, guys. Remember from the top, we got our analysis all the way to the down. So if you, you, if you do this very often as an exercise, it will normally take around 10, 15 minutes only. Most important, guys, you have to keep doing your back test. Okay, your practice, your practice in terms of your back test, your front test, your emotion in trading. Okay, you know how to calculate your risk, you know how to calculate your reward. You understand how does the price break structure, you understand where is the confirmation of rejection. So all of this is the key to your analysis. Okay, guys, so I hope this one example can give you something that we can learn. Okay, I'm going to give you again another example. So let's head it to the next example. Okay, guys, let's look at the second example. In this case, this is the GBP NZD on the monthly time frame. So let's change the line chart. Okay, we can see here this is a resistance. Since this is a monthly time frame, then we do not require second movement. Okay, so first we need to mark the danger zone. So what's the first step? We go to the monthly, weekly, or daily time frame. So this is the monthly time frame. Second, we go to the line chart. We mark the horizontal line. Okay, this third step is to mark the horizontal line. And since this is a monthly time frame, we do not require to mark the second movement. So step four, go back to the candlestick chart and mark our zone. So from the shadow all the way to the edge of the resistance. Okay, so once we mark this, let's color our danger zone orange yep light orange there we go okay so next we just wait for price to come in so normally we will go to the weekly or the daily time frame so we wait for price to react okay price has already entered the zone what should we do now is we just wait for price to do a confirmation of rejection or it breaks out so if breaks out, then we wait for a pullback and then wait for confirmation of rejection. Only we enter three. Okay, guys. So we can see here, price has met a three black crow. So we have one bullish candle and then three bearish candle so let's look at the weekly time frame on the weekly time frame is even stronger okay price made a bearish engulfing but this is a consider a high risk type so let's go back to the day okay now let's look at the weekly time frame okay so the weekly Time frame, the candle has closed a bearish engulfing outside of the zone. Daily, we can see that there's a three black crow. Okay. So, weekly, we have the bearish engulfing closed outside of the zone. This is the bearish engulfing. Correct, guys? So, we have the rejection. Price did a rejection in this area. And then, reject with a confirmation of rejection with bearish engulfing at the weekly time frame. So, we don't have to refer anymore at the daily. Weekly is strong enough, which is the bearish engulfing. Next thing, what should we do, guys? We look for setup. Let's go to daily. Okay, in the daily, you guys can see anything? I can see something here. That is the QM. Okay, QM. So we mark the QM left shoulder here, here. Okay, and we mark this as a blue color. All right. So let's go to the weekly time frame. We can see that this setup is in the body of the engulfing of the weekly time frame. So this is very good. So when we look at this setup, we have to find the risk first. So entry is 1.97968. Our risk will be here. Okay, our stop loss. So stop loss will be around 65, 65 to 70 pips. Now this is too high. So once it's too high, what should we do? We go to the hash 4 time frame. See if we can find any better setup. Okay, guys. In the H4, I can find even better QM. Remember, guys, whenever we go to QM, like 
like for GBP pair, whenever I did a big test, price will always react to the QM on the latest price. So when I say the latest price, this is a much later, later, this is the latest. So latest, what should we do is we move our QM to this area. Move our entry point to the left shoulder here. Okay. So normally GBP, GBP pairs react to the latest left shoulder. So this is the latest left shoulder. Okay. So we have the high, low, high, high, lower, low. So we go back to the weekly time frame for confirmation. Okay, good. The setup is still inside the body of the weekly Engulf candle. You see this horizontal line here? It's still inside the body. So we are still at the low risk. Good, guys. Okay. So once we have this, what should we do is we got to check our risk and, re and reward. This time, our entry point will be 1.9833 and our risk is 1.9964. So this is about 31 pips. So we have significantly dropped the risk by half okay so you if you think that you want or you willingly to reach 30 to 35 pips then you can set your po here so if you do set your po then congratulations you are actually in the profit currently okay guys so next to set our reward here okay so we go to the previous lower low of the qm so i'm going to mark this green color with number two okay guys so, and then Let's go to the weekly time frame. So weekly time frame, let's find the previous law of the support. So this will be our previous law. Next previous law support. So we have two TP. First TP here. Second TP here. Okay. So once you have two TP, next what should we do? We look for roadblocks. Potential roadblock. Here we go. We have one demand if you are going for TP2. So we're going to color this as red color. Let's go to the hash four and check any. Yes, there are some more here. So we have some more roadblocks here. Even though you want to go to your first TP, there's a first roadblock ready here. There's another roadblock here. Okay, so these are all roadblocks. And that's all for here. So we have three, about three roadblocks. So we just monitor when price uh, entering this zone. Okay. So if you want to use the Nora entry, what you should do is I'm going to wait here. Don't wait for price to come up, but I will entry around here. So as you can see, let me delete here first. Okay. As you can see, guys, so the price has come into the left shoulder of this zone. Okay. So price coming to this left shoulder of this zone. As we can see here, there is a structure of QM. Okay. So I'm going to mark the structure QM first. This is the left shoulder. All right. Okay, left shoulder here and mark the horizontal line as our entry point, which is here. Okay, guys, and then we go to the M15. There is this bearish engulfing at the M15 body candle. Now, we don't have to wait for the price to come out of this zone. Why? Because this is not a danger zone SNR. All right, this is the entry point for QMR H4. Okay, guys, understand this. This is not a danger zone. This is the QMR H4 setup. So instead of we entry at the H4, I want to entry at the smaller time frame using the Nora entry at the M5. Confirmation at the M15 is sufficient for me. Okay. So the confidence that I have that this price is going to react and going to go down is very high. The chances is... 90 percent okay so i have that confidence because the reason first i'm gonna write down here first reason why i have the confidence okay first i have the confidence is because price reacted from weekly sorry monthly danger zone okay secondly how does the price mark reacted from the monthly danger zone that is the weekly Quickly, confirmation of rejection by forming bearish engulfing outside of danger zone. Okay. So third, what is it? The daily H daily and H4 QMR. But we will choose H4 QMR. 
MR as our entry point. Why? Because it has the latest price and smaller risk zone, which is equals to 31 pips instead of instead of 60, how many? 70 pips. Let's put just put it 70 pips. All right. So I have a strong reason here. See, the confidence that I have is very strong. Uh, I'm going to put this down here. Okay. Even though I do have the confidence of 90%, but I do not want to be overconfident. So if I do not want to be overconfident, what should I do? I'm going to set my SL. Okay, let's check. So this is our entry zone here. Yeah. So I'm going to set my SL. Okay. So what should I do is I'm going to set my short position, put it here. Okay. So at first, I'm going to calculate the risk first, guys. So the risk I'm going to set here, see, from here to here of the head of the QM is only 10 pips. So I'm going to set 15 pips. Okay, 15 pips here. There we go. But since the GBP NZD has a higher spread on the standard account, better to save. To be safe is at the 20 pips. So I'm going to put 20 pips. All right, guys. So when I put 20 pips, but my take profit will be the H4 setup, which is here. There we go. So we have our mm, here. Why we couldn't see it? Let's check. Let me make this bigger. Hopefully we can see it in the H4. Yes, we can see it at the H4 already. Okay, guys. So let's go back to the M5. Let's check our... Okay. As you can see here, it says that the risk reward is I only risk 20 pips. Okay. But my reward is 237 pips. So the risk reward ratio would be 11.8. So this is very high, guys. And then let's see how does the price react to this. Okay. So price did react, okay, and come back down, and then goes back up again. Okay, guys, as you can see, it did not even break this structure here, the higher high, okay? When it did not break this structure higher high, means the candle did not close above this area, then the chances of the price coming down is still very high, okay? As we can see, it floats. For how many pips that it floats? From the entry point that we have here so i'm going to mark this horizontal line here and i'm going to mark here so it floats around eight to nine pips eight to nine pips floating to me is okay eight to nine pips floating for gpp pay but my reward is going to be very high remember that again guys so since price has break on the m15 time frame confirmation has only occurred on the m15 time frame okay outside the zone here so, but we entry before the confirmation even created. So, that's the best thing about no right entry. So, let's look at the H1 and then we see how does the price react. Okay, guys. Whether it will reach our first TP or does we even reach our second TP. So, I'm going to make it faster. Okay. Let's go to the H4. Much faster then. Okay. You see, guys. Price react to our roadblock. You can see that, right? Price react. Let me zoom in a bit. Price react to our first roadblock. See, react, go back up. However, it did not goes all the way up into here. It goes reacted a little bit, and then comes back down. Reacted on the second roadblock, goes back up. Okay, then reacted in this roadblock, and then goes back up. So it has took our first TP. Our first TP is how many guys? Two hundred thirty-seven pips. Now, if we go for the second TP, let's move it, this one here. This is even ridiculous, guys. <laughs> you risk 20 pips. Our risk reward ratio will be 22.59. The amount of pips is 454 pips. Okay. But however, we're not sure whether price is going to react all the way to our second TP. At least, guys, we know that we can set our break even. You can set even up to here. So it's up to your choice. Okay, guys, as you can see, price did not reach our second TP, only reached for the first TP, reacted in this roadblock, and then continue to go back up. So, guys, remember this. So, we have all this roadblock as our monitoring zone. 
So it's not all the time that price will gonna go or react to our TP. Okay. So this is some of the back tests that you can do. Make sure you guys always do a lot of practice and training. Then the more you do, the more you'll be able to identify and the more you'll be familiar with this kind of pattern. Okay. Do a lot of practice. Guys, so I require you to do three screenshots of assignment. So like I said, doesn't matter how you want to do it. Most important part is that you show me your danger zone marking. Then you have to show me the confirmation of rejection. You have to show me the setup in the lower time frame, the setup of confirmation in the engulfing candle body. And then you have to show me again, how are you going to entry using the Nora entry? Okay. I want you to do three of it. You can do however you want. Most important, you can do your story. And guys, I do appreciate people who really has to put in the effort to learn. So if you put in your effort to learn and show me that you really want to learn by doing your assignment, it doesn't matter whether you're doing correctly or incorrectly. You don't have to worry because you know why? I want to understand up to where is your level of understanding. So through your assignment, then I can understand whether you really understand what is going on, whether you really can analyze from the top down analysis. And then if you can't, you make mistake. Don't worry, guys. That is where I can identify and I will assist you as much as I can in the group discussion later. But if you do not put your effort and putting and doing your assignment and then expect me to answer your question, I'm sorry, you yourself do not put effort, you yourself do not try to even start drawing your assignment, then I would normally ignore your question. Because why? You haven't put in effort and then you ask question. So I do not appreciate this kind of people. I do appreciate people who put in effort. They are not worried about the mistake because they want to learn. So I hope you do your three screenshot, save it in the folder and submit late in the assignment group. And don't worry about your mistake. As I said again, I want to see up to where is your understanding. If you make a mistake, then I will try to assist as much as I can to able to improve your understanding. This is what it is all about. See you at the next class.